Good morning. Sean here, Mountains Garage. It's a pleasant Sunday morning, and if I'm being totally honest, yesterday when I said I was going to pick up the garage, well, that meant I was going to play with more turbos, and then I'm going to pick up the garage. So today we took my eBay cast iron T4 flange turbo log manifold. It was $287 I bought last year. Their, their price went up and now they're back down to 287. And the turbo I'm mocking up is the run of the mill GT45 that sells for 145 to $150. Uh, it's a copy of a genuine Garrett Turbo 45 series turbo, hence the GT45, but this is a clone. Initial impressions, I mean, I've read all about them on the internet and they actually have a decent reputation, you know, for a $150 turbo. And it doesn't reek of cheapness, if you know what I mean, when you take something out of the box. It's actually packaged quite well. Better than the, the uh, Borg Warner, actually. You know, they actually uh, got little plastic covers over every hole. And it doesn't immediately jump out at you that this thing's a piece of, you know. Anyway, let's go take a look at it, and uh, we'll go from there. I expected this to be a total failure because everything that I'm going to show you in this video is meant for a Silverado. Now, of course, the engine's all the same, but other things would possibly interfere. I expected it would probably hit the control arm. There's no way this is going to fit. Now, as I mentioned, I'm going to build a couple turbo log manifolds. It's popular to flip the truck exhaust manifold upside down and you run your log pipe up here. It gets really close to the coils. Plug wire access is all but impossible. If you can go down with your log and your log's down here, spark plugs, all stock stuff, piece of cake, I keep using my hand like I'm a hand model. So I bolted it on and I right up the last second, I said, there's no way it's gonna clear that control arm bolt. It did. And I'm impressed <laughs> that it did. So before I swing around front, I'm still up on my perch here because the car is halfway in the air. I'm standing on stuff. That's why I keep falling down and killing myself out here. But obviously running a exhaust pipe down, you could, you know, throw a cat through there. So please don't throw cats. But anyway, this would be a piece of cake or you come out through the fender, whatever you want to do. But I'm a fan of going underneath for the most part because it's a street car and I'm going to have some kind of exhaust system. That might be my turbo muffler. <laughs> but I am impressed that it clears the control arm bolt. And this is without even trying. If you added shims and everything, you could actually turn that bolt around. In this style of control arm, you're looking right at the bolt. It's not hidden like a stock upper control arm. But if you were working with that, you could grind the bolt off. You could do all kinds of things. I'm going to raise the motor probably a quarter of an inch anyway. So all in all, it is a win. Uh, the turbo, if I look in the line from the hood, clears right now. The, it's not clocked correctly, but so it would still fit under a flat hood. And while I have it bolted on, I'm going to go ahead and build a crossover. And I'll show you the components that I'm going to use for that in a minute. But I find this situation curious, and I'm actually watching another guy do a build with this manifold. I hope it's cast steel like a LS manifold. Because there's no wastegate here. They actually put the wastegate in the crossover pipe, and that to me doesn't make any sense. You're only venting half the motor. Maybe that's enough to control boost, but I think, you know, in theory, it ought to be right about here. Sticking out this way on the curve. The way that curves up, it should be have an alternate exit for the most efficient wastegate placement. So if I can cut a hole in that and put the wastegate there, then it would work. So doing the research and watching dyno videos and whatnot, the GT45 on an LS motor is good for not quite 800 horsepower. It won't do more than that. It's too restrictive. But in the 650, 700 horsepower range, it's pretty happy. And we'll compete with about anything out there. But using this turbo, you're giving up the potential of, a, if your engine will do it, of, you know, a couple more hundred horsepower with a S475 or a 7875, something along those lines. If 
But a little work with the power speed calculator. If this car weighs 3,000 pounds and I have 650 horsepower, I'm into the nines in the quarter mile. That's impressive by itself. So to build the crossover on this setup with the cast iron log manifold, I'm going to use a cast iron truck manifold. That's currently frozen outside in my box. These little $88 stainless eBay headers are a Silverado manifold replacement. And before I bolt this on the driver's side to show you how nice it clears, even if you were just naturally aspirated swapping, I've used this header and it works great. Just like the truck manifolds, they also work down and forward. They actually clear. And if you were remote mounting your turbo and are gonna make your own pipes, uh, on that 63 Nova I did, I V-banded a set of these. I ground that little spacer tab again. These things are all over the LS blocks. I'm sure it's there for the factory fixtures. I just grind it off a little bit so the header doesn't touch it, but there's plenty of room to come down around if you're mounting your turbo over here. And the same is true for this side. The manifold fits down and forward. So there, it's a good option if you're building your own pipes and don't want to use a manifold and want to use a little stainless header. It works good for those. But let's put the other one on. And maybe I'll brave it outside and go see if I can dig up a manifold because that's what I'm going to make the crossover out of for this setup. We got a little bit of sloppy snow yesterday then it froze overnight. The sky was really clear and it was pretty, but... I like to look at the night sky. So I've already got my lock thawed out and I'm in the box. And I've already walked way over the transmissions. It's messy out here. And found some manifolds. Now I find some truck manifolds are really narrow and look restrictive. Same with that one. That one I'm probably going to cut the top off when I make well, actually this one. I like how the these are pretty generous, so I'm going to saw that off. So I'm going to bring that in the garage, and I don't need that one, so I'll leave it here. But I found this nice beefy round manifold driver's side, and I even found the mating pipe. My buddy sells me a lot of LSs, and he'll do a good job cutting the pipe off so it's still usable. And here's my full race truck manifold installed on the driver's side. You're not going to run a manual transmission Clutch linkage Z bar, just like the three quarter length clipster head as I tried on the small block Nova, the 71. This wouldn't allow for that, but if you're going fast with a Turbo LS, you probably don't have a clutch pedal. I said it, I'm sorry, but it's probably true. And if you want a clutch pedal, you can run hydraulic. If GM never made the LS powered truck, I know it's a Vortec, but even GM calls them LS series. So uh, the Silverado stuff is very swappable. Somehow Chevy always finds, whether they plan it or not, to find a way to make stuff universally fits other stuff. Underneath the car, I will try on the stock uh, connector pipe. Most likely I'll V-band it and straighten it out because it kind of heads over here a little bit. And I'll come down around the converter area and easily make a sorry about the light from the fluorescent light up there but easily make a crossover that joins up to the log manifold so this log manifold is a t4 turbo flange my s475 is t6 they do make an adapter and with a little bit of port work that would actually bolt on and allow me to bolt my T6 to it. And I've, I've actually studied it. And with a little grinding, it would probably not restrict flow enough to matter. And I believe size-wise, the T6, my S475, would fit right in here. But I wanted to do something a little racier than that. So obviously, still oversized and just a bunch of raw material. But over the uh, last couple of years, I've collected. And most recently, I actually bought the turbo LS stainless flange in inch and three quarter. These are inch and a half scheduled 10 weld L's which have an OD of inch and three quarter. They actually, that one's actually stuck in there. They fit so nice. Uh, this is actually 410 stainless, I think. I got it in a swap, but it's good enough for what I'm doing here. 
at the T6 flange. This pipe I collected a while, well, a long time ago now, but this is pretty sloppy, but it'll bend out. They, they started it for you, I guess. I actually called them when I got it and like, really? You couldn't go a little bigger to actually make it fit a T6 flange? Whatever. So this will be a fun little project. I've studied them online. You go online same way. It's going to be very similar to that cast iron $287 manifold. I have more than $287 in this as it sits. Uh, it'll be lighter, hopefully as strong. You're only on six 8 millimeter bolts. So in any case, like the twin turbos I showed you yesterday, I'll probably run a brace between the turbos and or brace to the engine. Uh, it has solid mount, so I could brace anywhere and it wouldn't be a concern. Uh, I'll step it down to two and a half inch and I'll probably use one of those stainless little shorty headers I showed you, showed you on the driver's side. I make a crossover and this one, no problem. Put my wastegate somewhere around here. This will be shorter or longer. Curved however I want to do it. So that's a project that we're going to do in the upcoming days. I'm also going to take a stock manifold and I've seen them done the other way where they put the pipe on top like I told you but it really restricts a lot of stuff and makes it close to the coils makes plug wires a nightmare I'm gonna cut it right down across here and just basically replace this with all the same stuff I have more of these I have a box of them because this is probably the expensive part the little flange was 50 bucks by itself another forty dollars worth the L's so if you're not looking to knock call it a hundred dollars off you could start with this and with the 410 stainless if I want to, I can MIG weld it. I need to practice TIG welding, so I probably will. This will have to be TIG welded. I'm going to tack it together, and then i got to look into a dual argon regulator for my TIG welder. Because I'll actually try to purge this and everything when I weld it, I guess. Back purge it. So if that wasn't totally clear, when I do the cast stock manifold project with this 410 stainless, these two pipes here, I could MIG weld it. But I'll probably take well because I need the practice. And when I do this, this is actually pure stainless combined with some 410 that I think is mixed in. So I'm going to actually back purge and take weld the whole thing. With 50 pounds plus the wastegate, only maybe adds a pound or so. I want it, the whole rig to be strong. But by the time you get all the connecting pipes and the whole turbo setup, seem to gain strength with extra piping, which it's bound to have in and out so studying the box of my s475 that's the part number made in usa 15 2016. i had ordered it and received it on 19 2016 i believe i gotta check the calendar but it was a real uh, three or four days after this thing was built it was at my house i thought that was pretty impressive the twin Borg Warner S366s, made in Mexico, and they were built in 9-9-2020. And the GT45, your guess is as good as mine. A+, plus, it says. Shanghai, the old Shanghai spooler. Uh, there's all kinds of nicknames people come up for with Chinese turbos, but they really need to look at a map, because a lot of times they're calling out cities that aren't in uh, China. Oh well. All right, I'm gonna get back to that cleaning I promised I'd do, because this place is a mess. Well, stay tuned. Who knows what we'll do next time. I need to get back on the 71 and see if I can make stuff fit on that. Have a great day, talk to you soon.